Hi everyone, welcome to another uh, in the series of Ask Dr. Ted. Uh, last time we did fainting, and I hope you listen to that one if you want to know about that. And today we're going to talk about seizures. And today, uh, welcome to the big leagues. Seizures is a whole nother story. <laughs> if somebody has a seizure, you go into the emergency department, right? You go in. You have to find out why. Now, let me just tell you a little bit about how the brain works, first of all. The brain is, I think they call it the last of uh, final frontier in medicine because we don't know everything about the brain. We know a lot, but there's a lot we don't know. And uh, seizures, they write books on seizures. There are dozens of different kinds of categories of seizures. And then within each category, there are dozens of causes. But basically, by and large, this is how your brain functions. The best thing I, I thought of three examples. One is like dominoes, right? You can set up one domino and then a bunch and you can set off branches from those and branches from those and branches from those. And all you gotta do is hit one domino and then it causes them all to go and it'll cause each of the branches to go and go until you push one domino and before you know it, you can have millions of dominoes downstream falling just from that first one. Um, that's what your brain's like. And another one is kind of like uh, this movie where these crazy uh, guys in their 20s, I guess, they, this is hilarious, but they, it's weird, but they set up mouse traps. I think they bought like a thousand mouse traps. They all set them and put them all on the floor. There wasn't that much different distance between two mouse traps. And then this guy goes in with nothing but gym shorts on, no shirt, short gym shorts, and bare feet, and he goes in and starts rolling around on the ground on these mousetraps. And you can imagine, you hit one, and then it snaps, and it hurts, and he's screaming the whole time. It's one of those movies. You've probably seen it. You know what I'm talking about. But all you got to do is trigger one of those mousetraps, and when it snaps shut, it flips off the ground, and it hits a couple more, and then they snap shut, and they hit a couple more. And before you know it, the whole room is flipping mousetraps until they're all triggered, Right. Your brain's like that too. All it takes is one mousetrap, one nerve to start firing out of control and the nerves are all kind of interconnected and it'll start the whole thing going. The, another really fun one that's kind of, you probably all seen, you know, the turkeys, they always do this around Thanksgiving time. They'll have some reporter go out to a turkey farm and he'll go out and he'll yell something. He'll say mashed potatoes or happy Thanksgiving and all the turkeys will go blah, 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 and it goes through the whole crowd. That's exactly what your brain does. Your brain is in each ner nerve, each neuron nerve is connected through a series of connections with all the nerves. So if you have one part of the brain that starts to fire, it can trigger all the areas of the brain to start firing. And, and what does your brain control? Everything, every muscle in your body, every um, memory you've ever had, your eyes, your core muscles, things you can control like your hands and arms and legs. And, and when you contract one part of your body, that muscle contracts while the other one has to relax. And then in order to do the other, this one contracts while this one relaxes. If they both contract at the same time, what happens? Contraction, contraction, it just shakes and it won't go anywhere because they've got to work in unison and they've got to work coordinated. When you have a seizure, they're all going off at the same time. So everything just is fighting. The contraction muscles and the relaxation muscles do not work together. So everything's firing. Um, every memory you've ever had would probably flash through your mind. I remember a neurologist, world-renowned uh, neurologist saying, if you could only remember a general seizure, uh, not one of these little petty mall, one of these ones where people will just kind of stare off for a second and then they'll be back again. That's not the kind of seizure. That's petty mall. That's a whole nother category. But a generalized seizure, the first thing that happens is the person loses consciousness. And uh, when you lose consciousness, you won't remember anything anyway. But if you could, it would be the most amazing experience of your entire life. Every memory you have, every sight, every sound, every smell, your sensations, everything would trigger. Your motor movement would fire. That's what we can see because it's scary when somebody has a seizure. Their eyes roll back in their head. They, they can bite their tongue. Your breathing gets weird. You're not breathing coordinated. You're kind of gasping in and out in an incoordinated fashion. Seizures are horrible. They're horrible to witness. Nobody likes seeing a seizure. I don't care if you've seen thousands of them. I've seen hundreds of them uh, over the years in the ER. I've seen people pass out and have a seizure after they pass out. They always look bad. They always look scary. That's how it works. Once one gets going, they all get going. So what can trigger that? Well, it could be something you were born with. 
Sometimes little kids have seizures and they've got to do special tests and they see a neurologist and they figure out why. And then they give you medications to try and turn those nerves down so they don't fire. Because if one, if you get one not to fire, maybe we can keep them all from firing and control the seizures. Um, it could be an old head injury. You hit your head really hard or you had a bad brain injury and you get scarring in there. Just like when you cut your hand, there's a scar left after that. When you hit your head real hard or you have a bleed or a stroke from years ago or anything that, you know, some kind of damage, it can leave a mark on your brain or a scar. Scar tissue can trigger a seizure. All it takes is one scar, one little area to trigger all of them. And the, so again, when you have a seizure, everybody goes in and we start looking at your blood tests. We wanna make sure that your sodium and your calcium and your magnesium are not too low or too high. Um, we wanna make sure you don't have meningitis, a, an infection in the brain or a viral infection can trigger seizures. Medications can trigger a seizure. If your heart's uh, blood pressure drops below a certain point, That'll cause, again, remember blood needs, you have to have sugar and oxygen in order for the brain to work and you have to have blood pressure to get them both there. So if your blood pressure drops, your blood sugar drops, or your uh, oxygen drops, that can make one of the nerves get irritable and it fires and then it gets them all firing. So here's a really common one. Remember we talked about fainting last time? Um, if somebody pa passes out or faints and you try and stand them up and they're just like, you know, they're unconscious, but you're trying to stand them up and that blood pressure can't get back blood to the brain and you stand them up long enough that their brain goes without oxygen and sugar for 30, 40, 60 seconds, then they will have a seizure. And what was simple before, like fainting and something maybe that was no big deal, if as long as they didn't feel anything before they passed out and they feel great after they recover and there's no pain and no symptoms before or after, what was a simple fainting spell or passing out can become a seizure. Now you gotta go in. Now we have to do CAT scans and MRIs and blood tests and various things, EKGs to check your heart. So a seizure is an entirely different thing there's dozens of causes. They're all the same thing. If somebody has a seizure, you go in to the emergency room. Easy. Most common reason we see seizures, I'm not kidding you, is somebody that already has a seizure disorder and they're on their medications and for whatever reason, they stop taking their medication. And what happens if you have a nerve that wants to fire on its own and it'll trigger all the others and you got a medicine to keep that nerve from firing, what would happen if you stop taking that medicine? It's, you're gonna have a seizure. Almost always, and that's exactly first question. They come in always on ambulance because you can't move somebody with a seizure. They won't get in the car. It's hard to move them. They're scary. Um, the first question: Do you have you ever had seizures? Yes. Are you on seizure medicine? Yes. Did you stop taking your medication or forget? Uh, yes. <laughs> we're, we're, we still check some things, but almost always we send them right home again. They still come in. They did the right thing coming in. Um, first time seizures. That's a lot more, you know, we get a lot more worried. We watch those and they're probably almost surely going to get admitted, see the neurologist and do all kinds of testing to figure out why. If you have one seizure and you never have another one and we never know the cause, your CAT scan is normal, your MRI is normal, your blood test, heart, everything's normal. We just say, well, you had an unprovoked seizure from whatever reason. If you have two seizures, so more than one, two or more, and we can't find out why, there's nothing on the CAT scan or MRI. There's nothing in the blood test, nothing on the heart test. No reason for you to have a, a seizure. You're just having them and we don't know why. That's epilepsy. Epilepsy is when you have two or more seizures and we can't find the cause. That in a nutshell is epilepsy. Now a neurologist could give you, could write books on this. I'm just talking to parents and patients that I've seen over the years, uh, whether, you know, just general information. I want you to know, and again, uh, these are things you'll want to talk to your doctor about, but that's generally it. Another very common one is seizures because of a fever. One of my sons had this when he was uh, probably about maybe nine months or a year old. The neurologic system in little children before the age of five or six is not fully developed. And sometimes if you have a fever, your fever goes up real quick, real high, real fast. That can trigger one of those nerves and it'll spread over all of them. And my one son came in and said, uh, you know, your my brother is in there shaking on the bed. And I went, what? We go in there. And sure enough, he was out there. He was having a seizure. They generally last, oh, 30 seconds to a minute. And then they stop on their own. And after you have a seizure, you are wiped out. 
when somebody passes out and they come to, they'll be awake and alert and oriented and talking and they look pretty good. And you can ask them, how did you feel before the seizure? I felt fine. After a seizure, they're out. They can't even talk to you for 10 or 15 minutes or longer. And that's why you have to call an ambulance again. It's hard to get them to the car. So seizures are always a big deal. You always go in, almost always. It's nothing scary, but you still got to go in and let the doctor help you to decide if that's anything. And that's kind of what they are. Sometimes you might have one trigger and your hand starts shaking and then it slowly moves up your arm and into your, then your whole body can go. And then when you wake up, everything else recovers, but your hand, which sees the longest, may be limp for a while. And that's not unusual. That's a, it's called Todd's paralysis. And, you know, people think they've had a stroke or something. And these are, that's why you have to see your doctor because these are just complex things. Seizures are a completely different uh, uh, item than just simple fainting and you feel fine after you recover. So anyway, hope that answers some questions for you. I hope uh, that's helping somebody answer some questions. If you have any questions, type them and ask me. Ask Dr. Ted at gmail.com. Ask Dr. Ted at gmail.com. Text them to me. Nobody else can see your questions. I don't believe. I don't think anybody can see them. So don't feel shy about asking them. And uh, I'll answer any questions you might have next time we do this. Okay. Thanks a lot. And thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you next time. Bye bye.